Thank you. Dr. Cox, in one minute, tell us why you're running for office and a little bit about yourself. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity and just for the opportunity to be able to go out and advocate for our public schools. So thank you. Well, this is my 21st year of being a public school superintendent, 29th year in education. And also I teach the courses that you have to take to become a school superintendent. So I'm really proud of that because I get to play a role in other people's lives and really make a difference. So that's why I believe why we're in education is to make a difference in others. So that's why I'm running. And I just saw all the reforms that have come into the state to just take away the creativity of our teachers. So I'm proud to be here today and just so thankful that I'm able to be out here and we're just going to win this. We are going to win this and we're going to help our public schools again. Now speaking of those high stakes testing, what are your thoughts on those? The end of the year instruction for high school seniors, the third grade reading tests? Well I think uh, we really have to look at what is the value, what is the purpose of those tests, and are they measuring what they're supposed to measure? Third grade reading tests actually measured 49 percent language arts, so you could actually fill the test and be labeled a non-reader, but actually be a great reader. And so as we, as we look at those tests, and you know, I think there's 8,000 students approximately that failed the reading test. 4,000 of those were special needs children, and those children shouldn't be taking the test anyways because they have an individual education plan that actually uh, measures the growth of that student. So we really have to take a look at that. And the end of instruction test, I've really been out there promoting that we need to eliminate the end of instruction because business people across Oklahoma are telling me that that is getting in the way of workforce development. Actually building a skill for a student when they walk across the, the stage at, at high school graduation, I want to put a skill in their hand along with that diploma. All right. Now, do you think that the A through F reading scores for schools is a meaningful measurement? Well, actually, as someone who teaches uh, research and statistics, I, I see that it is flawed. It's not valid nor reliable, and it shouldn't be used to measure anything. And really, the A through F uh, report card actually causes dissension among schools, really finger pointing among schools. So what is the purpose of that? And so if we are required to have an A through F, what I will do is actually break it apart, not have a single grade, but if a school is doing really good in mathematics, then that will reflect in that report card. And a parent can really look at it and see wh how that school is doing. So I want something transparent like a student report card if we're going to have to do it. But otherwise, I'm for eliminating the A through F report card. All right, our next question. In your opinion, are the current funding levels for a state education really enough to ensure that our students are getting a quality education? I would say no, because if you look across the state, you see classes of 35 students in second or third grade. And so that's where, where it says that we need to bring more money back into public education so that we can actually hire more teachers and lower class size and have more individual education. Over the last five years, we've been 200 million down per year, which right now, that's over $1 billion that we could have put into public, invested into public education and really do great things for our kids. So how would you improve the working relationship between the state school superintendent's office and school districts across Oklahoma? Well, I think that's where my advantage is because right now we have over 400 school superintendents across the state that are backing me for this campaign. And so right now we already have that trust built. And so the relationship is there. And so, and I tell them they're there to help me. They're beside me. They're not just behind me. So they're going to be there ready to help. And when we take over, and so we're just going to see positive things come from this campaign. All right. Now the state superintendent's office has certainly been mired in controversy, of course, for several years. What would you do to gain that public trust in office? Well, I think as an educator and coming into this, we're building trust every day. And for the last, well, 29 years, people have looked at me as a trusted person. So I see that coming in and they know that I'm sincere and that this isn't about John Cox being state superintendent. This is actually about getting in there and taking care of public education and our children. All right, that is our time. Dr. Cox, thank you so much. Thank you.